Hello. Today we're going to make one of these little guys. A little hummingbird. And we may have a little project in addition to that. We'll see what we're going to do with them. Uh, it's made up of three pieces. Basically a beak. Uh, a compound cut body. And a set of flat wings. Makes it very simple. Uh, makes it look like look at it at a distance like a little hummingbird um, the uh, the beak of course could be uh, put up at a slight angle if you'd like uh, if you want to make it face down like it is it's up to you um, here's the pattern for it and it's going to be up on my page uh, which you can uh, get to by clicking on the link below um, what you're going to need is a uh, blank cut from a, uh, in my case, I cut it from a 2x4. It's uh, one and a half inches by one and a half inches, approximately six inches long. And from that, you're going to cut the body of the bird out. And then you're also going to cut the uh, beak. And uh, this will be cut from a piece of... Uh, one quarter inch uh, birch plywood. You could make it thinner if you want. Go to one eighth or some other size too. So we might as well get started on this and see what happens. Um, we're going to take our pattern and cut it out from the paper here. Okay, let me put that aside for now. <clears throat> and we take our blank and some masking tape. I use uh, one and a half inch wide um, painter's tape. You can use the green, the yellow, the blue, whatever color you fancy for yourself. So we put this over the exterior of our block mainly to uh, attach the pattern to but the uh, lubricant in the tape helps the blade cut through a lot more smoothly I think so you want to do this you don't really have to put tape on if you don't want to but I've been doing this this way for a long time and it works and if something works I learned you don't fiddle around with it. <laughs> okay, let's take this guy over to the uh, adhesive table, as I call it, and put some adhesive on the back. Okay, we're over at the adhesive table now, and I got some glue stick. And uh, I'm going to just rub that on there. I prefer to use glue stick as opposed to uh, aerosol sprays, which... I'm sure you get into your lungs and pollute them up, no matter what you do to prevent it. So I'm not going to use that. You do what you want, of course, whatever you feel is best. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, we have our glued up pattern. We're going to attach it so that the line, the seam is right on the edge of the block and we'll just fold it on over and pat it down nice okay and now we'll take this over to our drill press and drill a couple of holes in here for our entry blade our entry hole blade uh, yes entry holes for the uh, scroll saw blade okay we're here at the uh, drill press and we're gonna drill out a couple of entry holes here nothing complicated to this and 
Here we go. Okay, that's all we need is four holes in there. As you can see, we're going to be cutting the three-dimensional version of the body out of this block and also the three-dimensional version of the beak. We're over at the scroll saw now and I have a number seven reverse tooth blade I'm going to use for cutting our uh, body out and our beak. So let's do that now. There we go. All right, that's nicely taut in there. But first, we're going to have to raise this up and put that in and tighten it down. We'll take our time with this, go real slow. Don't want to rush it. Don't want it to be distorted or anything. Here we go. Okay, we got the one part of the body done. I'm gonna leave that inside there for now. Don't want it out yet. And we're gonna do the beak. Very simple, easy cut. There we go. Okay, we're back at the bench here, and uh, we've cut out one side of the pattern. Now what we want to do is we want to cut out the other side, but we don't want this thing flopping around in here at all. So what we'll do is we'll take some tape. <coughs> and put it right over that. That'll hold that in place for us on that side and then we'll flip it over to the other side and we'll do the same thing and that will prevent that from sliding around here too double double protection so to speak now we go back in with our saw and cut out these other pieces and we'll be all done okay ready to cut the uh second side of this pattern we'll use the same routine we'll do the body first and we'll do the beak second there we go Okay, I think we've got our parts now. We'll take this apart and see what happens. Pop it out. Here's the body. And 
throw that away. And here is the beak. And we have our body and we have our beak. Now if you want to, you could slant that beak a little bit to raise it up or bring it down even more. Or you could leave it like this, which would be very similar to the other one we have. All right, we've got our neck section to cut out now. And that's the wings. We've cut this off here. And you can use some of your scrap wood to do this. I've got a piece of uh, birch ply here, quarter inch. I think we'll just glue this down on here and use it. Might as well make some use out of this. Okay, I gummied up the back of this thing with the glue stick. And we'll just spread this out on here. Don't even really need to do any entry holes. We'll just start cutting it and cut it out on the... On okay, we're back at the scroll saw. We've got our little wings here. We're going to cut them out. Okay, that was a nice, easy cut. Just peel off the pattern. Didn't have to uh, put uh, green tape on there, by the way, because this scrap piece already had uh, tape glued on it from another project. So, saved a little bit. Of okay, we're over here at the mop sander. And uh, we're going to take this bird and round him over a little bit. He's awfully chunky right now. And we want to smooth out his edges. those over I think the uh, <coughs> take a little bit of sandpaper here and just sort of rub the edges of the beak on it on each corner take the fuzzies off of this don't want to really do this on the sanding mop because it's rather fragile I usually find with uh, small things like this, if I try to do them on the sanding mop, they end up flying somewhere across the shop here, and I never find them again, so that's nice enough. I don't need, really need to do it too much. Okay, now, what are we going to do with this? Well, we're going to use a little drop of glue here on the back of the, the beak to begin with. <clears throat> Use my old mustard jar glue dispenser. Just put a little bit on there. And then take it, wipe it up there, and line it up visually with the head of our bird. And just put it down there. And I'm going to just leave it there. I'm not going to put any... Uh, clamp on it or anything because it's almost impossible to clamp but I'm going to leave it there and let it dry and then we'll come back and do the wings later okay this guy has dried up pretty 
pretty well. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do now is take a drop, another drop of glue, put it on the back. <clears throat> Get the glue bottle to cooperate here. There we go. Just need a little dab there. Don't need quite a bit. And then we take our set of wings, pop them right on there any way you want them. Have them close to the top, you turn them around, stand them up on end, whatever way you prefer to put them on, actually, it'd be fine. And then we'll take a clamp with this one. And we'll just put a, a nice spring clamp on here. There. And we'll leave it like that and let it stay over here and dry. Okay. And we'll come back and see what we can do with these guys. Okay. Now that we got these little guys all done, we're going to paint each one a different color. I got three of them that I made. We're going to use these for our hanging ornament. So let's paint this one a nice sky blue. Okay, we're over here at the uh, drill press. Uh, the birds, I made three of them, and they've been painted different colors. And uh, they make a nice little ornament in themselves, of course. But what I'm thinking of doing is making this into a uh, hanging ornament uh, for outdoors. Uh, something like a wind chime, except that we don't have all the noise associated with it. We have the movement instead. So the first thing we're going to have to do is take each of the birds and drill a thin hole, probably about 1 8th, 1 16th, whatever size drill you want to use, uh, down through the center on each one. And then we're going to run a string through that to uh, tie them together. So let's put the hole in here first. I've got a uh, board so that I can keep the beak out of the way so it doesn't get mangled in the process. Okay got our hole drilled through the bird bird number one anyways and we'll uh bird number one anyways and we'll do the other two and then we'll string them up together okay we've got our birds drilled out here now and what we want to do is we want to run the string down through the hole to put our first or one, one of our birds on here anyways won't necessarily be the first one but Let's make sure the hole is nice and clear and then we'll cut off a piece of this string so it's nice and sharp on the end hopefully okay we take our string and just feed it down the tunnel here comes out the other side and of course it isn't going to do that so we take a toothpick and force it through all right now the first thing we want to do that would be our it's going to be our probably our top bird maybe Run that down 
to about there. Just sort of eyeball it here, you know, you, there's a lot of different lengths you can use on this, but we don't want them too far apart. So we'll make the green one the top bird and we'll take our string and tie a knot in it, thusly. Make sure it's a good size knot so that it doesn't go through the hole when we go back. And we got our first bird hooked up. Okay. Now we move on to the next one. Okay. Let's see if we have as much luck tying up the uh, blue bird as we did the yellow bird. We take our string and drop it down through there. Get the toothpick just right. We can force that string right on down. That looks pretty good. And what we'll do is tie another knot here. I don't want them too far apart, but we don't want them too close together either. Second knot. Okay. Got two of our birds together. And now we try for the third. The third bird, we'll call it. The third one will be the magic one. One that gives us the most problems, no doubt. Okay, came right through. Not easily, but through. <laughs> and we just sort of eyeball this here to see what we got for distance. Get up around there somewhere. Tie another knot in it. And I think we got it done. Okay. I'll just cut this bottom off here. So we don't need hanging down anymore. And that completes that part of it. Okay, I'm outdoors now, and I finished up the uh, hummingbird project, of course, and uh, got it hanging up here in the tree. You can see it. When the wind hits it, I'm sure it'll spin them around and move it a bit. But it makes a nice hanging ornament in any event. You might want to try this and see if it works for you. Well, I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, uh, click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. And that way you'll be notified of any future updates I come up with. Thank you for watching.